And I did a story while in Chicago that I had wanted to do for a long time about Mexican immigration, a hot button issue to this very day, of course, with the politics uh, that we're hearing about building walls. And by the way, I think we should be building bridges and not so many walls. But <clears throat> so I, I decided that I would find out what it's like to be a Mexican immigrant getting into this country. Uh, so I, I went undercover and I convinced my news director in Chicago to let me go to Laredo, Texas, and actually go into Mexico and find a smuggler who would bring me into the U.S. So I was pretending to be just another Mexicano who was looking for passage into the U.S. I spoke only Spanish. I, of course, dressed down. I told my friends, I'm going to go undercover to Mexico. I want to pose as a Mexican. <laughs> I'll never forget them saying, well, it's not going to take a lot of acting, you know. <laughs> so, but I found a smuggler on hidden camera who for $300 sold me a fake birth certificate and a fake social security card. And that night, he puts me on an inner tube and I floated across the Rio Grande, all captured on hidden camera by my camera crew hiding in the bushes on the Texas side of the river. And then I didn't stop there. I got on a bus, because this was a story for the Chicago station, right? I got on a bus and went to Chicago, and I got a job at a restaurant, at a Greek restaurant in Chicago, where we had heard that the owner of that restaurant had seven other undocumented workers working for him for 13 weeks, and he hadn't paid them one penny. And every time they complained, he would say, hey guys, you got to sleep here in the basement. You got to eat all the food you want. You keep complaining, and I'm going to call immigration and have you deported. And that happens, as you know, to this very day. So I went there, you know, pretending I had just arrived from Mexico, speaking only Spanish. And I, I said, I, I, I applied for a job. And he said, OK, you're hired as a dishwasher. So there I am by day washing dishes with a hidden camera. And at night, I went down and I slept with the other guys in the basement next to the, the dishes and the silverware and the cans of food. And I still wonder what those workers must have thought, seven other guys, because by day I'm washing dishes, and in the middle of the night I pulled out a little camera. And I started interviewing them in Spanish about their lives. And they told me the tragic story of how they were being held as virtual slaves in this restaurant. The next day I came back, this time wearing a suit, speaking fluent English, with a camera crew behind me. And I remember we had to chase the owner of that restaurant through the parking lot, because he didn't want to talk to me. But the day after that story aired on Channel 2 News in Chicago, the US government moved in, shut down the restaurant, arrested that guy, and got the Mexican workers their money and temporary visas to remain in this country while they worked on their citizenship or their residency. And I knew then, <laughs> I knew then that those were the kinds of stories that as a Latino I could tell better than anyone. Um, you know. Those are the kinds of, journalism should be about shining a light on the darkness, but shining a light on injustice and in corruption. I think when journalism is done right, those are the kinds of stories we should be doing. And unfortunately, too often these days, we're worried about the Kardashians and Justin Bieber and what have you, and we're not doing enough stories uh, the way we used to in, in, in television news. But I think when we do it right, those are the kinds of stories we should be doing. Peter Jennings got on the phone and he said to me, listen, John, this is gonna happen again in your life. There'll be times when people offer you something and they don't deliver, they back out of an agreement. He said, but don't worry so much, John, don't worry so much about talking to the movers and the shakers of the world, the presidents and heads of corporations. Don't worry so much about talking to the movers and shakers. Talk to the moved and the shaken. In other words, talk to the real people. He said, you as a Latino reporter can go into the countryside in Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, and you can communicate ways with people in ways that other reporters can't. Give that, do that. Talk to the real people of those countries, the campesinos, the peasants, who are the real victims of war, right? Who are the real victims of natural disasters and, 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 and hurricanes and mudslides and volcanoes. Give a voice to people who don't have a voice.